Yo, what it do, man? Welcome to Grind Face and the Therapist, man. This is episode two, man. We're going to be talking about getting it out the mud. This is Demetrius, and this is my wife. Shania. We've been together for 28 years, married to 23 or 22. I don't know the math. I keep forgetting it, but we got history, bottom line. So getting it out the mud is basically, let's start, man, in high school. I'm going to start in high school because... This is where my my talent started. Um, I took an art class because I enjoyed drawing. I was a, I liked drawing. I wasn't good at drawing, but I enjoyed drawing. And I took a computer class. And the crazy thing at Pomona High, they didn't have computer graphics. I didn't know nothing about computer graphics. But at Claremont, they had a class with computer graphics. That's crazy. So I didn't know you could combine art and computers together, which makes computer graphics. So later on in my years going to college, I'll figure out. But you know what out. was crazy, though? Remember when the, the um, colleges kept sending you um, stuff in the mail for computer graphic classes, like for um, degrees? Oh, yeah. And Actually, I, I got accepted and go. Because mm-hmm. I had a baby. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't going to leave my baby. Mm-hmm. I don't even, it, it, it was it, in Arizona. It was, yeah, it was, I think it was some private schools just run up that student loan shit that, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like no university or nothing like that. They just wanted that, that gets you to get that student loan. Mm-hmm. So basically, we're going to talk about getting it out the mud and how the, the, the process starts way before you even realize it, that your gifts is it's in you. You just got to know how to tap into it. So what, what, what do you think your gifts, when you spotted your gifts that you currently using now that you experience when you was a kid hmm. i remember fifth grade we had a haiku assignment and it was kind of like this poetry and i remember that was like the first time i fell in love with poems and then when my brother died i used poems as a coping skill not even knowing it was a coping skill because i would just talk about my feelings and from then on i was writing poems and then you know that later on transitioned into like movie scripts and stuff like that in your books? I've always was a writer sometimes. That's what I'm saying. From the time I was in elementary. Hmm? So you, you tapped in when you was a kid. You seen take no classes and nothing like that. No. So it was just in you. So it was just in you. But I want to go back to what you were saying about your talents. I think even with um, work ethic, I think people don't even understand. Because even in high school, you were always working summer jobs always trying to make money like you always had a work ethic so even I think though the work ethic became of one of my own stuff and my mom wasn't giving up nothing to my own so you know what I'm saying you imagine going to school you, you school shopping you get three pair of pants and five t-shirts you know what I'm saying you had a certain age you got to make your own money just to just survive I feel like but most people won't, and that's what I'm saying. Well, I ain't going to say most, but what I'm saying is from an early age, you always had that go-getter mentality, that work ethic, like I'm going to make something happen. Like I'm not going to depend on anyone. True. I'm going to get up and go get it myself. True. Which is a talent within itself because you could be a genius, but if you don't have the work ethic to put in the work to make it happen, then you're just and a- I think it's um, part of the tools too in the community because I feel like um, the summer job program was awesome. Mm-hmm. That was really Pomona Youth Employment. Pomona Youth, shout out to them. They ain't around no more, but you know, what I'm saying that summer job program was really a blessing. And a lot of kids, you know, my kids was young. They wanted a summer job, but nobody would hire them because they wasn't of age. So I think that type of program need to be coming back. And then what introduced me to computers? They had a computer program class, which they um was teaching everybody how to use the internet. And this was back in 1995, you know what I'm saying, when the internet, people didn't know about the internet. Like, I was the first one on with the internet. And it's crazy that now I look back, when the internet first came and I learned how to use the internet, that I'm making money off the internet now and living mm-hmm. life good off the internet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just the tools of in the community that could help you plant seeds for longevity, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, you know, talking about talent and getting it out the mud, do you even, did you think, like, I can make something out of this with my talent in terms of the whole marketing and, no. and branding? No, so when, uh, like, when I was drawing and doing, when I first went to 
took in classes to college. She took in graphics classes. I was excited about it. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm learning something new. Then I realized they just taking my money. It was a hustle for them to take my money because what they was teaching was basically on the internet, YouTube classes. And then was the real slap in the face because they, they promise you to place you job placement. You know what I'm saying? You come get your degree here. We're going to place you in job. So what they were trying to place me as UPS. Like I just got a degree in computer graphics and you're trying to send me to UPS. Like this is crazy. But I realized the the companies that was hiring computer graphics people, they wasn't hiring people that looked like me. So I were already done left. Like I felt like I tapped into the wrong market. I wasted my time because these companies ain't hiring black men. You know what I'm saying? If you look at all a lot of these tech companies, all these computer graphics, you rarely see black people in there. So I just took my talent and just utilized it on the streets with custom work, graphics, flyers, CD covers, and it used it as a hustle. I was never really trying to think it would become like some business type stuff. I was just hustling, using my skills as a hustle. She over here yawning. <laughs> it's like, late, and I've been working all day. Um, but I want to talk about like how you know our transition with us going to school, and I think the beauty of it is, is times we went to school at the same time, but then there's times where we took turns going to school, like we took turns working on our crafts, like so. Basically, <clears throat> somebody would be home with the kids. Because you'll have a household, which I don't understand when you have a two-parent household or two people in the household or one more than one adult and nothing is getting done instead of working as a team. It's one of the things I've always admired is like we've always been able to basically like, hey, this is your turn to do what you need to do. Hey, this is your turn to do what you need to do. And we've always stepped back. I think the people be having problems because they be trying to compete in relationships of you know what I'm saying? Afraid, like, oh, once once she get her degree or something, she's going to leave me. Well, I think, I, you know what I'm saying? Well, I think that's an insecure, but I don't think insecurities just manifest out of thin air. I think there's something that has happened in the relationship to form that insecurity to make a person feel like that. But I think it's, I mean, I think it's very easy, because I'm going to just be transparent. I think it's very easy to become like, dang, you know, my, my mate is doing their thing. Because I remember when I was a stay-at-home mom and you, because we had highly held productions at first. The first, first, it was highly yeah. held productions. And uh, you were doing your graphics thing and you, you know, were doing all these great things. And I was still trying to figure out, this is like early 20s, who I was. It's crazy you say great things because I just thought that was just nothing. Even no, I was, looking back at it, looking at the designs and stuff, I'm like this yeah, is garbage. that's because you're looking back at it now from your work then. But back then, that was like some a one hot stuff. That was, you know what I mean. And so, I think it's easy to be like, I think when you don't know your place or you don't know your talents, which is crazy because I've always had talents, I just didn't, you know, know how to tap into them. Um, I think you can get into that place, but. I think the beauty of it is with us is you've always like been like, Hey, this is us. Like, this is ours. It was never, this is mine. This is yours. How even when people are in relationship and they have separate bank accounts, you know, like who's the breadwinner? Like we've never really cared about that because it's coming out the same bank account. And so I think just operating as a team, you know what I mean? And like, Hey, like I'm a step back because there's times where you have showed up to my events and you in the background, not saying nothing, look like the handyman, just making sure I got my stuff. I got, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then vice versa. Like there's times you're doing your thing. I'm in the back, not really saying anything, letting you do your thing. And so I think being a team, you know, or just having a team and if, but if you, you know, not in a relationship, just like pushing yourself to your full potential. Like, and I think that's what's, what getting it out the mud is. It's not just saying, hey, you know, I came from this, so I'm getting it out the mud. But it's also like my work ethic and work ethic and what I'm doing to achieve the goal. You know what I mean? True. And I also think it's, you need somebody, some type of support system because it, it, it's, it gets you, hard. But what, if, but what if you don't have a support system? If you don't, I mean, you need a friend, a, a dog or somebody to tell you, man, look. 
keep pushing. I think because, you know, there was times I wanted to quit. Like, man, this is bullshit. But this you is a thing, saying? though. This is a thing. Yeah, we got each other. But at the end of the day, sometimes, okay, there's times where man, you got to be honest. Like, it wasn't motiv- any motivating thing I say is like, you ain't getting it. Just like there's times where, because we, we're in different fields. Let's just be realistic. We, we have talents, but we do different things. And there's times where I'm talking and you have no idea what I'm talking about. True. And there's times you're talking, I have no idea what you're talking about because we're not in the same field and we could be motivating each other. And at the same time, I know I'll be thinking like, dude, only if you knew you don't know what you're talking about, I'm listening to you, but I'm not really like, oh, pumped up on what you're saying. And so whether you're in a relationship or out of a relationship, sometimes you got to just be honest and motivate yourself because if somebody has to always be there to motivate you, then that's a problem. I don't want to say always, but I mean, sometimes some falls is harder than others. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you just need somebody, man, like get up, let's keep on going. Like sometimes you can fall and get up by yourself. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you fall and get back up, but sometimes when falls be hurting and you be like, damn, you looking around, can't somebody just pass me a glass of water or something? Help me. I, I mean, mean, yeah. So you, you just, it's you need someone sometimes. I guess not I don't like the, the word. I guess I don't like the word need. I think it's good think to have appreciate a, appreciative to have something. Yeah, someone. I think you should be appreciative. You know, to have someone, but I don't think like I love you, but I don't need you. You understand what I'm saying? Because whether you're here or not, I'm going to be motivated to do what I need to do. True, but it, that's you. Everybody in is strong. If you think about everybody going through their life struggles, need somebody. No, I just, I don't know. I don't like the word need. Because then, what does that say? The the reason why I'm about It would be easier if somebody was to kick you. Because sometimes you need to be kicked in the ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, get back on that. Okay, but this is the thing from a psychological perspective. And I know I'm always analytical because even I just feel like you shouldn't need anyone right it's it's good to have a support it's good to have those people there but to have need them means you're dependent on you're gonna do okay let's stretch need then yes please i don't like need but i'm just saying it was it was times that i didn't feel like going to school like man i ain't going today fuck all that and if you didn't want to go wasn't nothing i could say to make you go you was gonna go if you wanted to or not true but at the same time you know or even let's take it to the grind face. It was times that I got banned, and I'm like, man, fuck this shit. I'm I'm cool on it. You know what I'm saying? And what do and I you, do? You, you you tell me like you know what I'm saying. You motivate me to keep going. True, but then there's sometimes that you be so like pissed that I don't say anything. I let you be in your moment. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So so I don't say anything, and then you fight, figure out a way, and I be like, dang, too, he back on it. Because there's times when I motivate and there's times when I know when to be quiet. And like you just allow you to be in that space and mentally figure it out. And so that's why I'm saying scratch knee. Because no, you don't need me. You know what I mean? It's good that you have me for support. But no, because whether I'm here or not, you're going to do it regardless of what I say. And, and, and that's healthy. You shouldn't need someone to basically say um, motivate you. Because I know for me. I'm going to motivate myself. Well, well I'm not going to say motivate. you saying I motivate you to do something. No, I'm just saying sometimes when you trip, you need somebody to, you know what I'm saying? It's good to help have you someone. Up. But I'm help not going to say Put me. it that way. Sometimes you need somebody to help you up. No. You know what I'm saying? That's like you running out the gas and, and you need you need triple A. Okay, I you may need saying? triple yeah, A. That's what, I'm saying. This, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you run out of gas and you just need somebody to gas you up. Oh, look at that. That, that just, ooh, a triple coin. A to the coin. car. Yeah. Sometimes you just need somebody <laughs> to gas you up because you run out of gas. And that's all I'm trying to say. You Sometimes you you unexpectedly run out of gas and you just need somebody to gas you up. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You don't need them, but it's shit. Because you can always get out your car and walk. But damn me, it would be nice if somebody just gassed me up nice. and I could just roll, roll, continue on my mission. I'm going to continue my mission. I could walk it, but I'd rather have somebody just come gas me up so I could finish driving it. That's all I'm saying. What do you think is the, the, the hardest obstacles for you to stay on track, you know, with basically being focused on your grind? I Honestly, I have no, you know, back in the day. It was um uh, it was hard for me when you didn't understand my my um vision. 
You know what I'm saying? All you do is, is on the internet. All you doing is this. All you doing this and that. That was my hardest area. I mean, you didn't understand my vision of what I was trying to build. And that's what I'm saying. I wasn't always supportive in a way that you needed because I didn't. It was annoying. Like, dude, get off online. Get off the internet. And I'm still like that. Ugh. I'm still like that to this day in the sense of, you know, I'd rather be in the moment then oh let's take a snapshot let's take a picture but that's why and, and that's why i feel like it's a lack of respect of my business because when you come home from the office what your ass is doing on the kitchen table on your laptop for the rest of the <laughs> night so for you to tell no. me live in a moment yet you don't live in a moment when it comes to your business no that's a lack of respect of my business no no because no, no, my no. business is everywhere you know what i'm saying that's not true so for the last week I have been on my laptop because I had deadlines and I have some important grants and contracts that I've been working on. However, when I come home, I'm not always on. And I'm not saying that I don't respect it. I just didn't understand like, okay, this is all day. And granted, you have come a long ways and you have done a lot of great things, but I also think it, it should always be a balance. You don't do that now, but before it was just like, dude, like, Okay. I mean, I see it now in how far you have come and what you have done and accomplished with it. So I do appreciate it. I mean, it's allowed us to have certain things that we have, but I still think there should always be a balance in life. I don't think you should always be grinding so much that your head is always down and you never have time to come up. Sure. But I, I, I put down my phone at times. Yeah, like for five minutes. No, I'll put it on the charger. And, and you know, the funny thing, every time I put my phone and walk away from it, you want to get the call in and text me. Then I got to get up and go get my phone. Now it's back in my hand. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, but serious. Well, no, I do. I do. I don't know if you pay attention. Like, basically, when I go upstairs, go to bed, I put my phone on the charger and don't even go and look at it and watch a movie and stuff. How do you know? You know I know. But it took you a certain time frame to get to that point like you're not the type i will say this you're not the type to just go answer the phone be on the phone text and stuff all that you're really on there working yeah i'm really getting it out yeah the mud. so and even it's... if people call you you're not gonna answer your phone or respond so you basically you taught me that like hey Sydney, you don't always have to answer your phone when somebody called put your phone down so no i'm not saying like you was just on there playing around you was really working but in the beginning it was frustrating to me because I'm like, okay. Because you under didn't understand the vision. I understood the vision, but the vision was interfering with real life. Then, you know what? It was interfering because you wasn't started your business yet. No, I was in school. Yeah, that's what I mean. No, I was like busy too. But you was in school compared to what I was doing. So like compared to right now. So that's a disrespect that's, to my schooling so and what I was doing. Compared to right now, what you're doing. You don't even notice I'm I'm on phone because you're too busy doing what you're doing because you're too busy building your empire. That's not true. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that's where that's where I think issues come in when one person is building the empire and the other person is like, damn, this is all they doing. But see, when both persons, when both people is building the empire, they really, they their mind is untrue. shift, is focused on the untrue. objective. Untrue. Because I was building, I was in school in my master's program. And not only that, even after that, we would be out to dinner and you on your phone working. Like, that was a problem for me. Like, get off your phone. Uh, you don't do that now? <laughs> exactly. Back to my point. When you're building an empire, things go out the window. No, Because no. when she's building it, because now she's building her empire, it, it, it's... We bike riding, you on the phone with business. You know what I'm saying? We at church, praise and worship, she on the <laughs> phone with business. <laughs> yes, I'm lying. I don't go to church. <laughs> but what I'm saying is when the other person is focused and building on something, they ain't they ain't really there to pick at everything you're doing. I wasn't picking. You you but you was picking. If I'm building my empire and you you saying I won't do this and that. You're you're picking okay, because but you're not building. Okay, but so, listen, but when we but both listen, is building at the same listen, time, we understand the struggle. Listen, we we listen, understand listen. the grind. You can say that because this past week I've been busting my butt because I have a lot on the table and stuff I'm trying to accomplish. However, 
I will basically leave the office and I made it to the point where I don't even have to be at the office so I could be here with you. So I make sure that my household. So you don't take phone calls and be on your laptop when you're here with me? Sometimes. Okay, then. My point Hold is on. Exactly. No, 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 no. You, I, it's nothing wrong. With, I ain't complaining because I understand I understand the vision. And that's what I'm saying. When a person understands the vision, they ain't really going to. But it's it. not constant. It's not like. I do check my emails throughout the day. Now, I do that. But what I'm saying is I'm not just sitting here. Work. Yeah, for the last few days I have been. I've been up late night. That's why I'm sleepy now because I've had deadlines and stuff that I really like huge projects that I'm working on. However, I may and get I a got point. deadlines to post that no, viral post right there before it pop out. Bam. No, you don't. I got deadlines. No. You know what I'm saying? I got to be first to post it. You know I'm not minimizing what you do. I respect what you do. I love what you do. But what I'm saying is in the beginning, it was just like overkill. Like I've always maintained like, okay, I have a husband. I have three kids. Like I've always said like, I want to be successful. There's things I want to have, but not at the expense of my time with my family. And I'm big on that even to this day. Like, and you know, I am like, okay, yeah, we grind and we doing all this. But if I clock out tomorrow, this business don't matter. But the time that I spent with my family does. Exactly. And so you already know that's like my first priority. Yeah, I'm going to bust my butt. I'm going to do what I need to do. But there's nothing coming in between that. If you call the kids, call everything stops. No, I'm bullshit. Because I call you be in session. That's different. I can't answer my phone while I'm in a session. Everything don't stop. But I'm only, (laughs) okay, but this is the thing. I made it a point to only have sessions Um, one day a week to have clients for that very reason. Okay, y'all. So the point of getting it out the mud is basically you need to balance your grind. You know what I'm saying? So it it comes with a balance of working and family and I guess some downtime too. Because if you don't re-energize, it could affect. The both other um it could affect your spending time with your family and on your grind. So I guess it's three elements of getting it out the mud. Yeah, because I'm not gonna basically work so much to the point where my my marriage is like drowning. Some like, people would, but I'm yeah, not. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, I'm not. It's, it's, I'm not gonna sacrifice my loved ones for a business or empire. Like I mean, many people would be willing to do that, but that's one thing I've always said. Like. This is not greater than what's most important to me is my husband and my kids. So, you know, if 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 it's going to be at the expense of that, then I don't want it. You don't want it? No, nah, not if it's going to jeopardize us or the kids. No. So what's what's what is your like? What is your um, what is your reason of going so hard and building your empire? I don't. I don't look at it as going so hard. I actually but enjoy. You want you building this 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 um mental health facility? Don't put all my projects out there. Oh yeah, okay. It's like yeah, you going hard. But right? but okay, to the average eye is hard, but for me, it's everything I love to do. So for me, it's not work. So what's the what I'm asking? Like, what's the end game? What's the end results? What are you trying to accomplish? I like what. It, so for me, there's, you know, I want to be the, the Google and Facebook of mental health, TikTok of mental health. So you can't be all three, sweetie. I'm just you saying that the major, whatever's booming, not whatever's booming. Yeah. So, you know, I want that for mental health, but you know, my passion is movies and writing and books and all and speaking. And so I don't just have one talent. And so I'm not just in one lane. And so for me, if I was just doing when I was a stay at home mom, just doing the mom and wife thing, I wouldn't be fulfilled. Right. And if I was just doing that, I wouldn't be fulfilled. So you're saying you get a fulfillment out of it. Yeah. It gives me purpose. It gives me, you know, it, it, it fulfills me. It makes me feel good to basically be operating in my talents. Like, so it, it may look to the average heart. I like, Oh, she's going hard. But for me, I'm just being me. That's what's up. Me? Like, are you sitting there like doing what you're doing? Like, oh, I'm going hard. Like, this nah, is I'm, I'm going hard for the bag, so I can live the life I want to, and just travel, and just and and just expense, and just ball out. You know I think saying? you enjoy it though. No, you know what? I did when I first started. I used to enjoy it. I used to um, 
And then it's just, I, it got to the point of. I think you don't enjoy it because I think it's you, too many, the obstacles. I'm, I put in a box. I feel yeah. like I'm in the box and I can't be what I want to be. Well, I think you, because I, you, know you keep getting banned and it keeps being barriers and, and ways to stop you from pursuing. So in that, see, in my space, I have the space to be creative and create how, well, obviously I get no's on contracts and different things like that and stuff I want. But then I, you know, figure out other ways to maneuver and do something else and get it anyways. Um, and even if I don't, I enjoy like, I mean, come on, you know, I'll do therapy for free. Um, well, let me you know, scratch I'll write that. for free. I enjoy helping people. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy sharing the game. That's that's why I could say I enjoy what I, what I do. I enjoy when somebody and just giving them the gems. That's my enjoyment. I get enjoyment out that. So exactly because if you didn't enjoy it, you wouldn't keep doing it. So for I don't think I don't watch you and be like he's going hard. I just watch you and think like he's fulfilling whatever he's meant to fulfill. He's basically walking in purpose. He's basically. I don't know about my walking in purpose, though. Yeah, that was I, a bit stretch. Yeah, you, you reaching on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I I'm was still, thinking about that when I said, I'm still, like, yeah. is that, uh, I'm still trying I to search thought for about my that. purpose. Yeah, I, you know I, I, I kind of thought about that because. Yeah. And, then, and I think that's, that's why I'm thinking I might have to dibble and dabble in the relationship, love coach, coaching, lifestyle, what they call it life coach i think you give because i like advice. to give good, good advice i like to see people i like to give people information and lead them in the right direction and i think i get enjoyment out of that and i feel like so i don't even i might dabble in that you know what i'm saying but the funny thing is i guess because i joke around a lot people don't think that i'm knowledgeable and you know what i'm saying well, I think it's presentation. I think people judge, but at the same time, I think you have to be mindful of what you're putting out there for people to see. Because, like, when you do certain stuff, like, I know your personality. Like, I know it's a joke. I know, like, for example, let's even talk about the video with you and Dante and the hot sauce, and then she got mad, and y'all did oh, this yeah. video, like, and every everybody, everybody yeah. thought it was so real, yeah. and everybody thought y'all was about to fight, and so... Even though no, people want to thrive off the negativity. People do like to thrive off the negativity, but even that night, I told you we had a whole conversation, and to the point where I was kind of upset with you. Like you play so much and do so things, even like with the baby um, formula. We know it was expired, but it 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 paints you in a picture of being a villain when you're really not like that. And so, so many times it's perception, and you got to take responsibility too to how you put yourself out there because. But we know who you are. That, that's fine. Procession and being the villain. The villain got great information, knowledgeable. <laughs> they ain't got shit with the, the game and knowledge I have. If I'm a villain or a good guy. But what you don't understand is, is sometimes I'm, people won't look past that. And that's fine. If, if you can't look past that, then that's you stuck, not me. You know, you know what I'm saying. So if you see something on the internet that I do for entertainment, hey, that's you. It's called internet entertainment. And the thing is, a lot of people think they see something on the internet, they think it's real. That's, hey, that's not my fault. That's your fault. Well, let me ask you this, because this is questions that I'm sure people want to know. Like, you know, because you have Grindface TV, even though we know you have multiple pages, but people seem to be just stuck on that, um, that it gives you a negative connotation attached to who you are as a person. Now, I think people want, um, that's what people want to see. I want to say when I first started Grind Face, I was posting all the, the crazy wrecking this stuff. But after getting banned so many times, that page really t is like the Disney Channel. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how could you be mad about what's really going on in the world? This is real life stuff. I ain't out there filming. It. This is this is what's really going on. I'm just giving it a platform to be seen it, bring awareness to it. So that doesn't. So when people say, oh, Grind Face is ratchet ghetto. How? It's the same shit you see on ABC, Fox News. You know what I'm saying? So it's just what people want to see. And I think they say that because it's a black company. Well, I don't know why they say it. But I know why. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they say it, but I don't understand why people stay stuck on just that one page when there's multiple pages. Because they like to thrive off the negativity. Because it's, I, I agree, it's a lot of negativities in the comments, but I can't control the comments. Those are the negative people in the comments. So you can't judge the page or the platform because the people in the comments, that's them. 
You know what I'm saying? They feel like they could be free on my platform. No, I just feel like they're confrontational. They like to argue and they don't have a life. Exactly. That ain't got nothing to do with the brand. I could, I could post the, the cutest fuzzy ball picture. Somebody going to find something negative to say. Well, I think that's, you know, we can go psycho- psychological, spiritual. That's an inner issue, but I'm going to leave that alone. <clears throat> to me, if a person is always negative, you got to really self-reflect and look at yourself. You know, if you always want to, like, I don't even see the point, honestly, to be so driven by what somebody say that you don't know, to feel like you got to go. Like, I, I just don't get it. I, I but, but the thing is, what uh, um this is back getting it out the mud. It's like, I'm a business owner. This is like getting mad at the 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 H- owner of HBO because he's playing what's that these type of shows. This is you know what I'm saying. That's the part where people understand you know that it's an entertainment now platform. That you how you said you try to say I was disrespecting your company, which is far fetched. But what you're saying is honestly like a disrespect to you. Or any person that's like building up a brand because you're right if it was a a big corporation because they do the mm-hmm. same exact thing is uh, most okay. people probably don't even know who the ceo of hbo and i, I don't know if he's red or whatever i'm just using him as an, uh, an example um it wouldn't be the same conversation but if it's always like if it's a, a young we're person young, getting it out the mud. A black male or somebody that comes from a certain type of walk and lifestyle. There's so many, many negative things associated to what they're doing. But if someone in corporate America, which they do the same thing. Always. It's the same movies, the same violence, the same shows, the same vulgar sex. The same thing are worse, but it's not perceived the same way. So let me ask you this, even in terms of business. Um, do you feel like at some point as the brain grows that you will be respected as a businessman? Um, I think it's not about the brand. I think people want to value your respect on about how much money you make. And that's that's where they see you start making good money. Now they want to associate with you. Oh, now they want to be a part of your Not even good money. I think, well, I think, you and know, clout. the world is full of sheep. Yeah, so it's basically... One of the staff said um, they was going to freestyle. And I was like, I don't want you to freestyle at the mental health assembly because you might use profanity because you just, you know, he's a dope lyricist, Dr. Kariga. Um, But I said, it's crazy because you can have the same a celebrity that has a lot of influence be ratchet and do all this crazy stuff at assembly for these kids and in front the parents of these kids. won't say nothing about it the school won't say anything i don't know what the parents say but the school won't say anything i said but if we went there and did that it would be a problem and that goes back to um the business people only see business based on they associated with what their definition of success is based on society's terms because if you were hbo or if you were but a big Network, Netflix it wouldn't, or something. yeah, it wouldn't be seen or disrespected in the same light, and they would know how to separate. But um, I feel like I forgot what I was about to say. It's like a crab in a bucket mentality. They know you come from where they come from, and so they, it's like they want to keep you down and don't give you that leverage. You know what I'm saying? But shouldn't it be where we should we'll basically push them up? Li- so I'm it's all like for the underdog, right? I'm all for the underdog. So shouldn't it be like, you know, we see somebody like, dang, they really start like, it's this girl and I want to give her a shout out. Let me look up her name. And I'm all for the underdogs. That's why What's I post all the underdogs videos. You know what I'm saying? These big platforms are not posting Jose from around the corner. You know what I'm saying? I'm posting regular people stuff and making them go viral. But yet they want to see me fall. Her name is It's Jotty on Instagram. <clears throat> I-T-S. J A T I and I remember when she I mean she didn't have that many followers she didn't and I was always mm-hmm. liking her stuff trying to share her stuff because I seen what she was doing you know just I don't know her I don't but I see what she's trying to build and now mm-hmm. it's like she's building her page and it's getting momentum because it's like okay I can see what you're trying to do and I respect the grind and I respect how you're trying to get you know what, getting it out the mud yeah and so that's my level of thinking like to see somebody that's trying and you know like dang like they they really doing their thing to me that should be inspirational and you should want to help them versus you know a big corporation that's already there they don't need the help because they've already gotten the help to get where they're at 
But then when we see people that kind of, you know, like look like us or we're familiar with, so we say or we think, it's more of, oh, I'm going to, you know, knock that person or I'm not. Like, I have a lot of people that I know, you know, you get mental health services, why are you not coming to my mental health facility? And, and, and it's okay but because, you know, my therapist is booked and busy, but we have a waiting list. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like, why wouldn't you go support the person that looks like you're the person that needs to help to or the person that come from where you come from. I'm not going to always do business with somebody that just because they come bro, from where I'm I just come saying, from. You, but what you I'm, would want to see them <laughs> succeed because, damn, I knew him. He was stay next door to me. Let me help. Like people is because I'm they not, feel like you come from where they come from. They, they, if they feel like they, they are let them, let them. So they don't, they want to try to knock you I down. I don't necessarily always you know think it's they, they, um, they feel bad about themselves or whatever you said about their letdown. Well, I'm talking about my experience because they be on my page pissed off and like, why are you following me? No, if I just... If you don't like me, nigga, why are you following me? No, I they just... They want to see me fail. I think it's... Now you made me forget what I was about to say. I think it's more of a sense of they don't, they don't take it serious. Like, they don't look at it as a legitimate business. They don't look at it like it's not respected. It's not respected. So I'm not going to say like they is something that they're looking about themselves. No, I just feel like it's, Oh, that's just that little business. But they, it's like, when, when would it get respect? You know what I'm saying? Is it a, a certain, is it? And the thing is, okay, so it's stop. not even about my books, but stop. It, you know what I'm saying? But Cause I need, but it's about celebrity and clout. But let me say this. Are you looking for their response? Oh, no. So no. then. That's why I do me. Yeah. Because cause I just thought about it, like, to change the whole trajectory of the conversation. Because I don't care about your respect, to be yeah. honest. You know what I'm saying? I'm stamped and approved by God. What you say, don't say, don't matter to me. So I don't even care. I just. And at the end of the day, you know, we can't expect people to be like us. It would be, you know, loving if people were to like, hey, let I, me. I seen this video the other day. I actually posted my story. You said, if you so, if you if you focus on making somebody happy, you're making somebody else not happy. It's like it's it's impossible to make everybody happy. So just make yourself happy. Bottom line. It's that easy. Just focus on you and make yourself happy and do I'm gonna go do. deeper than that. I say just make God happy. Yeah, you can go deeper. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 my motto in life. If God is pleased, I'm pleased at the end of the day. Because that's the only person that could judge me, right? Is God. So So getting it out the mud. Are you out there getting it out the mud or what, man? It's a process. It's definitely a process. It's a process. I remember somebody uh, trying to get, I ain't going to bring that up, but you know what I'm saying? Getting out the mud, man. Yeah, don't, don't, you know don't, don't put nobody so out there. Go, go to school, invest in yourself, man. I tell people all the time, invest in yourself, find what you make, find what makes you happy. And it, it's, thing, stop judging yourself with other people on the internet, man, because Half of that shit is fake. And trust me, I know. Half of it is fake. Find what makes you happy, then learn how to make money from it. You know what I'm saying? If you want, if you enjoy cutting grass, find a way to start your own grass oh, business. Oh, like that one guy, that young dude, that Hispanic the haircut dude. dude. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was doing haircuts and he found a way. You know what I'm saying? He been viral by um, documenting how he do haircuts and, and motivating people while he cut their hair. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, just find what you enjoy doing and just be you, man. That's how you get it out the mud. Just be you. Stop being everybody else. Stop trying to look like everybody else. Stop trying to be like the next person, man. That's whack. And just stay on your grind. Like, you know, don't give up. My biggest thing that I would ever tell someone is no matter what it looks like, no matter how hard it gets, just keep going. It, the road gets smoother and it gets easier. I remember what 2019 i was frustrated like frustrated to the point i'm like i ain't, i think that's when i stopped that's doing my you, videos and everything yeah you, you, I just yeah, completely that frustrated stopped. Me. you know what i'm saying that's when that's when i was trying to get her on her videos tough like look look i got the formula i got the formula to get but you i was on. already on my videos long you know before you was even on this formula so, and stuff so, so she stopped her video. So I was like, and that's why I wasn't really the type to be in the front of the camera. And I, I had the, I had the formula, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, 
I had the at formula. At that point, I didn't care about the formula. I had the formula, but I couldn't get nobody to be content creators. You know what I'm saying? So this is why I stepped into that lane of being a content creator because I had the formula to, to go viral, to make money off the content, but I couldn't get nobody else to do it. So I said, damn, I got to do it myself. So I'm doing it myself and I'm making a bag off it and I can show you numbers that is hitting millions. I had one video hit 18 million. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I got the formula, but people don't want to listen to me. And the thing is, I'm not going, I'm not going to beg you to listen. You know what I'm saying? If, if you know me, you know, I'm going to share the information with you, but I ain't going to walk you to the, what they say, walk the horse through the water, make them drink. I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm just going to tell you. But I got the formula. But I, I have the formula, formula too. So we just had two different types of formulas because my my business is booming. Well, I'm talking about my formula is not your formula. <laughs> I'm talking about social media type formula in my lane. These are different. Yeah, you, you you said like like well, you I'm can't talking, well, lead we, the we, horse to the, I'm like talking about oh, content okay. creating. Oh, okay. When you was on your videos making content. But this is the thing. This is what you got to understand. That I'm not a. So exactly, like, you but already, you're a powerful speaker, and that's what I'm saying. The, the yeah, powerful speaker. Yeah, but let look. me look, look, and you already know how I am. Like, I'm not just gonna be doing something to do it. If I'm not feeling it, I'm not doing it. Yeah, if so it that was that was part of my frustration because everybody, I'm talking about my kids, everybody. I was like, man, I just need one person to come create content. So he got saying? the formula because I was on a roll. Like I was building a buzz when I was on my videos and stuff. And then when I just decided to stop, he comes up with this formula. But at this point, I was so frustrated. At this point, I was just completely. They wasn't trying to hear me, man. Nah, I was. It, I was the I, job I had. I was. I was running celebrities pages, right? It wasn't that I wasn't trying to hear him. It was that I was just so frustrated with my craft because okay, let me go into my backstory. This is how hard I was on my grind. This is. So I quit my job in 2018 to start my company, Girl. So this is like, what, my third company. And that's why I say don't give up, keep going. I had iServe. Then I had Girls Gossip and Women Network LLC that was basically buzzing and doing some stuff um, where it was like a mental health program for girls. And I quit my job because I had a contract on the table. And the first thing in business, what I learned is never discuss numbers with a person that's not writing a check. The the superintendent of the school basically signed off for my program for me to do it at multiple schools. And there was one principal, a black lady, I'll never forget this. I was so hurt because she asked me. And because I'm an open book, I have no reason to lie. I'm not a scam artist. Everything I do, I do it legit. She asked me how much were they paying me. When I told her, she got mad and said, oh, they, that's Jealousy. more than what they're paying more than my paraprofessionals. You know, I asked for $10,000 for a graduation and they won't give it to me and all this stuff. So she was like, I feel like you asking for too much. I'm like, what? Like, I got credentials. Like, I don't put in the work. Like, I don't put in the work to prove that I'm worthy and valuable to get this amount of money. And so she just couldn't fathom how they would approve me to make as much as money that I was doing to come in and do the programs myself. And so she basically told them she didn't want the program. Like, and I had just quit my job, put in my two weeks notice. So I would look crazy going back like, Hey, you know, and, and I basically trained the person that was taking my place. And so it was a valuable, a hurtful lesson, but a valuable lesson that I never discussed numbers with a person that's not writing the check as well. If they wanted you to know how much they was paying, they you would tell them. you. You learn as you grow. But the funny thing is, I always told her I had a vision that she was going to own her own mental health. Never program. wanted it at all. She kept fighting me on that. Well, this is the thing. I'm big on time. And so when you say mental health company, first of all, I never wanted a private practice because I love therapy. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not a nine to five type person. It just doesn't. I'm so creative and not even trying to be arrogant about it. Like, I'm working on multiple different things right now at once. And so my thing is I like to be creative with my time. Like I like to create things and I like to put things out, um, whether it works when I want it to or not. Like, as a matter of fact, y'all should go check out my latest book, um, Relationship Goals, A Healthy Blueprint to a Relationship, Even Transition of a Butterfly. Yeah, she I don't just... need no entitled <laughs> I did get tongue tied. 
But no, I'm working on mile.com, period. Yeah. And so basically, um, I forgot what I was saying that quick. So pretty much you made me forget what you I was man, saying. You man, you trying to promote your book and didn't know the title messed you up. What are you talking about? No, I was gonna say something else. No, but seriously, like, don't ever give up on your grind because like I had started a business, the first one didn't did it fail. The, you know, girls gossip. I basically, and so, oh, that's what I was saying. I left my job in 2018, had to basically then go into private practice. But hold on, but let's say how going to these jobs, you meet people that help you along the way that's going to help you that's what I'm getting in the to. future. That's what I'm getting to. Oh, you were saying, you were taking a long road. My bad. So pretty much I had to go into a private practice where I connected with somebody. Then, you know, and when you're in private practice, um, basically it was all cash pay. So, you know, when stuff get hectic, people stop coming because they don't want to pay $150, $120 an hour to see a therapist. And then I had to go to a jail to work at a jail. And it all came full. But I was only at the jail, what, November, what, March, April, May, June, July, for five months. And that motivated me. That was like the push to start my company. Like, I cannot come here every day. I got to do what I need to do. And my business is thriving beyond what I would have even ever thought. And so... I would always say, like, if you grind and do not stop, like, I I stopped the videos, but he he he's mad at me, right? Because he's like, why did you stop your videos? But I also believe because when you have multiple talents, sometimes you got to put that talent for to rest, and you got to basically let that go to sleep for a while, and then change gears and focus on this talent. And so that's what I did. I still love my videos. I still love speaking. I still love all that. But I needed to switch gears and let that baby gets some, some rest time and then switch it and take it up to a notch over here because I was getting tired over here. And now I'm re-energized and I'm working on so many different things and trying to put it out because I was able to shift my focus and say, okay, I need to turn and not focus so much over there because I'm neglecting my talents over here. Well said. Let the baby rest. <laughs> That's the that's when you bless and have so many talents. You gotta let some of them rest. No, I had to let you know the I had to let the. But let's talk rest. about the people that got one talent. I mean, well, the people, like, well, the people that, that look, they're they're, and it talks about even in the Bible, like you know, the different talents, and God gave one, God gave blah blah, and basically what they did with the talents. I don't care if you have one talent. It's not about how many talents you got. It's what you do with what you have. And learn how to work that talent in whatever you have. Yeah, it's, right? what you, it's what you do with what you have. Because even if I had one talent, I would ride that thing to the wheels f- fell off. You know what I mean? I just think God's timing is everything. And I think it wasn't meant for, okay, because think, I was trying to go into school districts. This was 2018, 2019. What happened? 2020 COVID. I would have been broke if I didn't, if I didn't pivot. If I didn't pivot before the, the COVID, COVID yeah. I would have been in a bad position. And I feel like, God, man, I mm, I just love God so much because he always covers me even when I don't so know what's going on. Even in that time of frustration, God was already letting me know what's up. Like, I need you to focus over here because he already knew COVID was coming. So for me, it was good that I put that talent to rest and focused over here because my business is crazy. When people look at my financials, they like, man, like, you know, I go to the bank, talk about loans, talk about credit lines. They tripping out how much my business has grown in a year. You know what I mean? And they like, dang, I've seen different mental health companies. I've not seen this on your financials. And so it ain't me, it's God. God had me pivot. Even when I was frustrated, I didn't know what, I didn't know what he was doing, but it all being in my favor. And that's what I'm saying. Like, my husband was mad, like, and I'm glad we talking about this because you're saying like, I didn't understand your vision in the beginning, but you didn't understand mine at this current time. When you're like, oh, get on your videos. He would be so mad. Like, just get on. I'm like, look, I'm not feeling that. Like, I'm not about to just be putting out something just to be running my mouth and doing something. I'm not even passionate about what I'm saying to get a bag. It's not about a bag for me. I got to really feel and love what I'm doing to do it. And so in that time of frustration, that was the greatest time for me. Because let me tell you something. You put me in a room alone with my thoughts, I'm going to work. And that's all I did in that time of frustration. My mind was just turning and turning and turning and turning till I turned something into a product. You did. I'll give you that. You got to breathe now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> 
You got jokes. Uh-huh. You got jokes. He said a whole lot right there. So back getting it out the mud, because she definitely got it out the mud. And, um, she's still going hard at it. So basically, uh-huh. all that, I'm still processing. What I said? Did you, I wasn't mad that you stopped making content. Or yes, you was. was. You was just, frustrated. I was just trying to motivate you. Nah, you was frustrated. You know and he, he would be so mad at me. I got the formula. I got the formula. You need to do some videos. You And then at first, I find myself about to do it to appease him. And I'm like, nah, like, dude, you just look. You start doing videos. And honestly, that's how he started doing videos because he was trying to create some the, the buzz for me to do it. For, and I'm just like, but I don't think it was meant to happen like that because at the end of the day. But basically, the, why I was going so hard on content, y'all let, me, y'all. let me break it down to y'all. I used to work for this company that I control celebrities' pages. Um, so basically, it was my job to post content on their pages, to run the numbers up, the uh, engagement up on the pages. So when I start seeing how much these Facebook pages was making, I'm telling this one client off all the stuff I posted on his page made $1 million in a year just off me posting off his Facebook page. This is when I like, this is where the key at, this is where I feel like this is, this is when I transitioned from grind face apparel to grind face TV, because I was like, I need an audience because I seen in the numbers in the back that people don't see that. So what social media could do. I said, this celebrity made a million dollars off me posting engaging content on this page. I said, well, I can't do that for myself. So now that I'm doing that for myself and I got, I know the formula, I was trying to put everybody around me, man, look, create some content. Look, just do this, do that. Because I wasn't the guy, I, I wasn't the one to be in front of the camera. That wasn't me. You know what I'm saying? But I couldn't get nobody to be a content creator. And then I wasn't going to outsource it to people I don't know. Because once money get involved, people want to be shady and all that. I didn't have time for that. So I said, fuck it. That's when I started creating my own content and running up the bag, running up the numbers. You know what I'm saying? That's where I got where I'm at. Using my formula, which I still share with people all the time. But many people don't listen. They don't understand it. And then it's, you got to put the work in, man. It's really, it's, it's, it's work to do this. It's not easy. You think you can just make a video and post it and go viral. It's key elements in a viral video that the average person don't know, but it's, it's certain elements you need in the video to make it go viral. And I tell people all the time, it's about triggering emotion out of somebody. That's one key element. Trigger emotion. You see, I think that's where we, we, we differ. Like, you know, you get it. He's always been a provider. So, this is like the way he provides for his family. For me, it ain't about the dollar for me because, you know, God going to let me get it regardless. At the end of the day, well, he going to let us both get it because it, it touches one household. But for me, it's about if I'm not passionate about something, I can't do it because my whole, I feel like my gift in life is to provoke thought, to change the behaviors of people. And if it's not effective, if it's if I'm not passionate about it, then I can't do it. And so, you know, during that time when he was adamant, it was like, it wasn't there for me. It just. And I can't realize it's not your lane. It's not your, your, your own purpose. What is it? Your purpose is where you at. No. You're not a content creator. I would disagree. Well, we agreed to disagree. <laughs> we <sure>. disagree. <laughs> because when I was on my videos, I was on them tough. And it. I just think that, I don't think it's easy for me to create content. Creating content is not a problem. The question is, do I want to create content? And that's my point. You're not a content creator. Okay, so tell me your definition of a content creator. A person that want to create content. It's a content creator. Yeah, I guess you would say that because a person that want to create content, they want to pre- create content all the time. And then another thing, too, is... Um, most people don't know this about me. I'm an introvert. They they probably think I'm not because I'm able to speak and interact in certain settings. But the whole having to be on the internet all the time is kind of like not really my thing. So you, that's you, okay. you, you, you may have a point with that. I, I would much rather write books and create... Con- no, 
Because I would no, rather create <laughs> no, not okay. Because you're we not talking, a social media content yeah, creator. Yeah, because a I'll, different type of creator. Yeah, I'll write like scripts and stuff all day long. Like that's what I love to do to put that type of content out. Like just being in front of a camera all day. No, but like I really am want to pray to God that I get to put these shows out because I got some dope shows and you know it's hard because you got to get a literary agent and all that. Da, da, da. But when we talk about content, when writing with me and the pen, crazy. Ooh, bars. <laughs> I could do that too. Bars. Even though I would never do that. So what would you tell a young person about trying to find their purpose and getting it out the mud? I would just say do what you love and stick to what you love. Like, don't focus on, you know, what everybody else is doing. Because, like, 99, well, the only person that really knows what I'm working on is you, to be honest. Everything that I'm doing, I just mm -hmm. feel like, you know, what you're doing don't have to be broadcast. Just do it. Yeah, you, you don't got to broadcast everything you do, y'all. <laughs> only I do that, huh? Actually, and the funny thing, people think I broadcast everything I do. But you don't. No, I don't. No, you don't. I broadcast what I want you to see. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a whole lot of stuff that I don't broadcast. But um, we're going to be wrapping this up. And I want to tell y'all one thing. If you're getting it out the mud, guarantee you're going to get a little dirty. Just wipe it off and keep you're on gonna going. You're going to get a little dirty. You're going to get a little disappointed. You're going to get a little frustrated. You're going to make cry a few times. But at the end of the day, like I told you, this is my third business and it's thriving. And I think it's not about basically what you go through. It's what you learn from what you go through. And oh, let's, let's hold on before we close out. But then it's it's not the purpose. Um, It's not money, man. Money is, doesn't, doesn't fulfill anything. And you know, I said people, because this was me back in the day. When I didn't have money, I thought money was all the answers. You know what I'm saying? I used to do everything, try to find any ways to get the dollar. And once I seen that I had money, I could do what I want to do, I was still kind of depressed within myself and bored. Like, you know what I'm saying? It didn't, it didn't, I didn't find happiness. That's what I'm saying. It's, so don't be out there trying to chase a dollar thing that's going to solve everything. It's not. I say find, finding something you enjoy doing really is, is true happiness and peace to me, my opinion. What do you think? Yeah, I think basically just focusing on your craft and doing what you love. Because put it like this, if my books are never a number one seller, right, I still enjoy them, still love writing, still think they the bomb. Because my goal is just to touch one. Like there is purpose behind what you put out. Because if you're not, if there's no reason for what you're doing, then what are you doing it for? So obviously, uh, enjoy me. Yeah, to yourself. Then, but the enjoyment I also get is to touch lives. And when somebody reads that book and they tell me like, "Dang, it made me think about this, 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 this," this that's gratifying. And to see, me. but and a lot of people get discouraged because they ain't touch millions. But uh, it was somebody just that touch said. One. It was somebody said, I want to um, I want to touch that one person to be I'm a, damn, I don't know exactly what they say. It's some, something I want to be. I want to be that person inspired Tupac or some shit like that. It was something like that. That one person because you could you could it, what it, I want to inspire the, the next Tupac or something. It's like if you get one person. You did your job. You don't need a million people. Right. If right. you if you impact that one person, that one person changed everything. Psh, that's more than reaching a million people who ain't did shit. Right. right. So we're going to close it on that note, man. Get it out the mud. Stay focused Get on your grind. Get it out the mud. She keep on talking while I'm talking and shit. Um, <laughs> like I said, I'm going to back. Get it out the mud. Get it out the mud. Focus on your grind. You're going to get a little dirty. Wipe it off and keep on pushing. Keep it moving. Grind face. <laughs>